All right, all right, all right. So, uh, of course, as you may have recalled from everything else in the chapter with the heavy, heavy notation with the tildes, complex exponentials, all that stuff, and dealing with waves, of course, Fourier has to make its imprint somewhere. And here it is. The, in, the inversion theorem, or the inverse Fourier transform, for the Fourier transform states that little phi tilde of z is equal to negative infinity to infinity capital phi of tilde of k e to the neg or e to the positive i k z dk uh we can invert that to the big phi and you know all that stuff uh the normalization goes to one over two pi to little phi z as a function of z uh tilde uh and then e to the negative i k z dz Use this to determine a k in the um, a tilde k in f z of t tilde is equal to negative infinity to positive infinity a tilde k e to the i k z minus omega t d k in terms of f zero and f dot z of zero. Okay, lots to do. Let's run it through our solution. Well, let's plug in uh, zero for t for f tilde z of zero and evaluate so that we just get exactly what we're looking for negative infinity to infinity a to the a tilde k e to the positive i z, k z as you see here we're in the uh we're in the situation where f tilde and capital a tilde can switch via the inverse transform um but we're not going to do that quite yet what we're going to do is take the complex conjugate of this which changes the uh, I on the uh, exponential to a negative, but also we have to star the uh, complex amplitude. And if we let L be negative K, then DL equal negative K, and we can uh, move everything through. The negative from the DK goes to, sw or, um, excuse me, the substitution L to negative K switches the order of integration. And when we substitute in the uh, DL, what we do is that has a negative on it too, so we switch the order back in the next step, and we're left with the complex conjugate is equal to uh, a tilde negative l star e to the i l z, e to the i l z dl. Renaming the dummy variable back to k, we see that the complex conjugate is equal to the negative of the complex amplitude, and again in this uh, forward transform looking thing. So then what we say is that the real, or f z of zero is equal to the real part of f star, or not f star, f tilde z of zero, which is one half of f tilde z plus f tilde z, both at t equals zero, uh, but the second one with the complex conjugate. Okay. So then what this shows us is if we add them together in the integrals, we get the one half and then the complex amplitudes add together in that one half bracket. Therefore, what we need to show now is that the one half with the complex amplitudes is equal to the one over two pi or the inverse transform. So now we need to show the right hand side. So meanwhile, if we take the time derivative of tilde z with respect to t uh, in the original equation, we get the um, negative, of course, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, never mind. So we solve for the bracket for the inverse transform. Okay, but now the time derivative, we get a uh, negative i omega from the time derivative, again, with respect to dk. Good to go there. Um, and we have that if we evaluate it at zero, uh, we just get uh, this bracket for the complex amplitude with a negative i omega, uh, a tilde, and then that sign goes to, uh, or yeah, yeah, with t equals zero. It just goes to e to the i k z d k. Note that omega equal absolute value k v here, so it uh, does not come outside the integral. Okay, so with that, uh, if we take the complex conjugate just like before, change everything around, we get the i in the bracket goes to positive i, we star the complex amplitude a, and we put a negative on the i k z. Okay, well, now we plug in absolute value kv into the uh, omega there. And, uh, okay, now we have a situation where we can do the same substitution style again. 
And since it's an absolute value, after we substitute in negative k or negative l for k, flip the integrand or the order of integration and then reflip it after we push the negative from the dl in there, we see that we get i l v uh, a negative l star e to the i l z dl. Okay, renaming the dummy variable back, putting the k's back, whatever. What we see here is that we have the same setup and we get negative infinity to infinity i omega. Uh, star of the complex amplitude of negative k e to the i k z. So again, following the same real setup, it's one half of the derivatives at t equals zero, both the uh, normal and the complex conjugate. Run it through in the transform and then take the inverse transform to showcase this after we recompile it. So the uh, inverse shows that we get negative i omega over 2 uh, with the bracket of a k minus uh, a star negative k is equal to 1 over 2 pi with the time derivative in there. Okay, so if that's the case, what we have here is we have a bracket of a k minus uh, a tilde of negative k star both have a f from both the time derivative and the function at t equals 0 but we have a factor of negative i omega, so we push that back inside to the right-hand side of the uh, derivative one. And now you see if we add these two together, we get exactly what we want because then the one-half uh, will go to distribute out, and then we get two factors of a uh, tilde k, and then the other two things cancel um, miraculously is what we want it. Let me go very, yeah, because we added them together last time, so this time it's negative. And we cancel them out to get a tilde k is equal to 1 over 2 pi, negative infinity to infinity of bracket f z of 0, plus i omega of f dot z at 0, e to the negative i k z dz. Again, Fourier transforms, very useful, very, very, very important, and you will see them again and again and again and again and again everywhere.